easy. That's just how it goes when you're um, driving this Dakota, to be honest. But um, I'm just sending a message really quick. It's 
just yeah, like and that, that water was like five dollars a bottle. There's we don't drink it. It's just you know, it's just kind of a collectible thing that's fun. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's just honestly, it's just a nice drive. Oh, dude. A freaking pedal pumping person in here. Like, I don't respect you guys at all that ask for that kind of stuff. Because obviously, when you ask for that, you're just a pervert. 100%. So, you know what? And I'm never gonna, like, I'm not really gonna show that as much. And I didn't feel that process, to be honest. When I did that, like, I'm just showing, you know, like, what happens when you're bleeding brakes. That's all the video was for, not for the perverted people like you. You know, and but what we were doing in that video, if you saw any of other updates or if you just saw that and got freaking turned on, uh, the brake booster needed to be changed out and so did the master cylinder in an 81 Mercury Capri, which fun fact, there's a transmission in the back of the truck right now is for that 81 Mercury Capri. So, you know, I removed the front seat, like driver's seat, and I undid the, the four nuts that held in the, the brake booster. Which that brake booster, it's no surprise that it was a dead pedal, to be honest, because it was bad. Um, like very, very rusty, very rusty. So, you know, it's one of those things that I, I was surprised that that thing even break at all, to be honest, with that brake booster the way it was. Um, the fact, like, I don't even, I'm surprised it didn't just, like, fuse itself with the firewall because of just, again, how rusty it was. And the firewall is totally fine, like, there's nothing wrong with the firewall, surprisingly. You know, you would think that the firewall would be screwed with it being as, that booster being as rusty as it was, but actually it was fine. Um, you know, it, it was quite good, so that's totally fine. I, um... And we were driving it the other night, like, and I didn't really have too, too much braking, but I wasn't braking it super hard yet. Uh, just on a little bit of a test drive. This was last night. Um, or last night? Was it the night before? It was the night before, yeah. That's when we did it. And, you know, it was uh, kind of annoying to get those four nuts out, to be honest, with the firewall, because the one thing is, you have this, you know, like, the steering column's in the way, so it's a little tight, and you can't get, like, on three of them, it's quite easy to get the nuts off, on the fourth one, yeah, that was not that easy, because there was just not a lot of, uh, um, just not a lot of, whatchamacallit, um, sort of, my brain can work. So just not much room to actually turn the wrench. I was I was using a, a you know a socket wrench, right? And it was uh, you know it was fine. Now, I have changed brake boosters before. I've just actually correction. That's the second brake booster I've changed. And now Keith was on the other side. He did the master cylinder himself, but I did the brake booster. Um, and then I put the seat back in which wasn't very hard to do at all. You know, and actually, because like, usually the seat fights me so hard, but what actually was supposed to happen with the seats is when you take the, uh, the studs out, and no. Like, what's our obsession with that? Seriously. I called you out before, and now you keep, you doubling down with it, and you keep just going at it like that, like, what's wrong with you? Seriously. Legit. You know what? I don't judge people for what they like, but I'm here trying to do an automotive podcast, and you're just trying to be pervert in the chat. So, you know what? You can honestly just leave. I don't care. Like, that, that just bothers me, to be honest. You know? But, um... Yeah, so anyways. Back to what I was saying. Um... 
I actually can't even remember what, what it was. Oh yeah, right, with the, the Capri. So, yeah, like putting the seats in, or the seat back in, because what's supposed to happen is when you, when you take the, the, the front two nuts off, it is actually supposed to, um, the stud itself is supposed to come with the nut, you know, as you pull it out, but it's not always the case that that happens. It makes it such a pain in the ass to relocate the, where the bolts go again and line everything up when those front two studs are just like that, so. And now the one thing is about this this road, because like I'm I'm headed towards Vulcan again, to be honest. So you know, um, like I I'm staying on this. The one nice thing about the sideways is like I can pretty much stay on the straight. I have to do a couple of turns, but overall, this is the way I like to go, and this is the way that you know I've only actually driven this highway in particular. This is my third time now because driving down coming back up. And I did it once going back up, but I've been on this highway a ton of times, a ton of times. Growing up, whenever we went to Calgary, this is where we went. This is the road that we went. You know, not so much anymore, right? Because we don't really go down to Lethbridge anymore. Or, well, now that we're on the opposite side, so... We used to be, you know, two hours away from Calgary. Now we're like one hour, like two hours south of Calgary. Now we're one hour north of Calgary. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know? I, I've been on this highway dozens of times. It's a nice little piece of road, to be honest, you know, just seeing the planes and stuff. And that's the one thing. Where I usually drive now, I don't see this big open country like there is down here. And it, it it's interesting how you can only drive like just a few hours and it change, the landscape changes completely from these open plains of these sort of back highways and stuff to, you know, like the main highways that cause it's kind of hard to traverse around on the, the, the back highways to go anywhere I want to go typically. Um, cause like, there's two ways really to get to Calgary. You know, you can either take this highway here, which this is uh, Highway 24, from Lethbridge anyways, um, and go up this way, go through Vulcan, go through Granham, uh, pass by uh, Carmen Gate. So go up there, or you can go through uh, Fort McLeod, and through Nobleford and go up to number two that way. But I prefer to go this way. It's a little quicker, to be honest. Even though Google says it's not, it is. I promise you. Um, you know, and I really want to pass this guy, but ah, I'm on a hill. There's a wait. But yeah, and you, can, you can kind of see through the, the Dodge Deckle, there's a motor back there. Um, which... Interestingly enough, so my buddy Shane, that might be going down to him. And, um, yeah, down in uh, California. Because, because, if you remember, he is designing me a multi-point fuel injection head. It's a prototype. And it's going to be... Instead of using an EC, ECUs and stuff like that, it's going to be a DIS system, which basically is just going to use simple sensors that are within the distributor cap. Uh, and then he's going to have individual coil back. Well, not individual coil backs. It's going to be uh, three coil backs um, to make it work. So, and it's going to be quite neat when it's done. I just he ran into a roadblock because he could not find one of these motors. So, and I needed one that had this specific head on it. And to be honest, this one's supposedly a very healthy motor. And looking at it, it seems to be. So, you know, all the fluids refreshing it, and the uh, the guy said it ran really smooth, which I I, I believe him. Um, you know, and he just he drove it from Calgary to Lethbridge, so that's a good indication. Yeah, that, that's a good test drive. I'll say that. It's over two hours. 
Ugh, I'm just I'm stuck in behind this slow truck. Come on, dude. Oh, and there's a train over there, which that's one thing. Don't really see much trains up north. Ah, speaking of Shane, there he is. Hi, Shane. Let me just pass this guy. Like, even like 
talking about people like that guy there. I'm a woman that's into cars. I love cars. This is an automotive sort of live stream. That's what this is. You want to make it perverted? Go find another YouTuber. Because there are those out there, there are literally channels dedicated to that that you can go watch if you want to be a freaking pervert about it. That's not my channel. That's not what I do. So, yeah. You know? But, honestly, like, this has been a nice trip so far of getting down here. Because, again, I grew up in Lethbridge. Oh. Cop has somebody pulled over up ahead. So I'm slowing down. Because now the law, they changed the law about a month ago. You have to, even if you're on the highway, you have to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour when passing an emergency vehicle. Even if they're on the other side, like if it's, this is a, just a two lane highway, so. I'm kind of surprised to see a cop out here, to be honest. Because it's just, it's open, like, this is open plains and stuff, you know. You can see for freaking miles. Or in the case of me being Canadian, kilometers. But I do wonder, how fast was he going that there was a cop that was actually here in the car? Because for the most part, you'd think they would not care. But, and it's a uh, sheriff. But, eh, 
No, 3.7 V6 or the 3.7 V6 is not a good engine. I promise you that. These motors, if they're not well taken care of, they are one of the worst engines, to be honest, that Chrysler ever made. So, you know, it's one of those things. Like the the engines that predated this. So this is called like I think it's called the Power Tech. I think that's what they call it. Um, blocks, which are overhead cams. Now the problem is, if you've ever done anything with overhead cams, you know they don't have their power down low, they have their power up high, which when I'm trying to go up hills and stuff like that, this thing is gunless. I have to actually give it quite a bit of throttle because its peak power is at like 5,000 RPM. It's not at like the 2,200 RPM that it's at right now. And I might lose connection here. Give me a moment if I do. Because the Little Bull River here is a bit of a dip. I'm going back up. Hopefully I don't, but... If I do, just stay with me. You know, because yeah, and actually, because what I'm trying to do right now, I'm not actually getting going home right now. What I'm doing, I'm going to Calgary to be at a car meet for about an hour, to be honest. It's not very long. Um, and then I'm going home because it's kind of a long way. It's actually not the route I would take fully, because coming from here, I would honestly, um, no, it gets horrible gas mileage. I, like, so this car, or this truck, got, what was it, 17.28, I believe, or maybe .88, I can't remember, liters per 100 kilometers coming down here. It has about an 80 liter tank, and it only did uh, about 400 kilometers. I wasn't completely empty, but I was close. Um, I think it's 80 liters. It might even be a 75 liter tank. Regardless, I put 72 liters in it, and it just was, yeah. This thing, I don't, like, fuel economy-wise, it's not even good, right? And for reference, my, my dad had a 99 Ram with the 5.2, and a five speed. Now it wasn't four by four. This is four by four and this is an automatic. But that thing, and that was also a single cap too, but weight wise it'd be a, actually it'd be a little heavier than this to be honest. That thing, I would get right around 21 miles per gallon, which is about, um, what is that? Like 12 or 13 liters per hundred kilometers. It's actually pretty good for what it is to be honest. You know, it's not like my Mustang where, you know, I get like nine liters per hundred kilometers, or at least my one Mustang, the other one doesn't do that. But, um, yeah, I just honestly, you know, I just, it's just not good. Not good on fuel at all. So, yeah, unfortunately, and I wish it was, because I'd be spending a little less money doing this, because even though, like, Technically, like, okay, the motor, you know, because if we can figure out for shipping and stuff like that, it might, it just, I don't know, we, we'll, we'll have to figure out something, and who knows, maybe I pull the head off that engine and send it down, send him a bell housing and a starter, he can find a block, and then, if it happens to be an earlier block, as long as it's like, I think it's 60, yeah, 66 and up block, it'll work just fine with that head and then the bell housing and the starter if I send them those. So, and that might be what has to happen because it's going to be expensive to ship. So, just save a little bit of cost that way. And yeah, because I'm sure he could, he could probably find a short block down there, you would think. Um, or even a long block and it just has the wrong head because this head flows a little better and this is the exact head that I have in my car currently. So, like identical. And something, I don't, will I be driving by it? I'm not sure. Because it's it's still quite a bit north of me if, if I am. 
Um, because it's right by Cheeto, Alberta, actually. There's this old Cadillac sedan. It says a 60s Caddy that's been sitting there since I was, like, four, to be honest. I remember seeing this thing every single time we went up to uh, Calgary or went to Edmonton. Like, either or. Because we always went this way. We always went through Vulcan, through Granum, through, you know, through Carmichael. Not the other way, where you go through Noblefer and for Wow. And I think like Stavely, I believe, on the other side. So, because yeah, like there's, if I, if I had driven like about 20, 30 minutes down that way, um, I could be on that other highway, but even though Google says it's faster, it's not. This is the route you want to take. There's less stops along this way, but you go through a Vulcan. Well, that's awesome. Well, you can see the the statue of the Enterprise there. And then there's some weird art installation that's next to it. I don't understand it at all, but, you know, art's very subjective, though. And, like, it's something, like, I was hoping to see a friend of mine, or any of my friends, to be honest, but they were all just busy, so... Oh, well. And, let's see, where am I now? It's a fire guard road. Where is this? Ah, uh, depends on my mood. You know, because my 81 Mustang, as a driver's car, it's really nice to drive. You know, you, you have the manual transmission, and it's a light, and you can throw it around pretty good. It doesn't have a ton of power, but it's still decently quick. But the other car being a convertible, and just having the... Uh, a functional FM stereo, because I have an AM radio in that car, still. It's hard to say. Like, it just depends on my mood, really. If I want to just, if we're cruising, the 86 all day long. For anything else, the 81, 100% Mustang. Versus the 86 Mustang. You know, and like, because the one thing is, and I'm not, it may have been able to fit. Because I was half tempted to grab one of his, like, his uh, 82 Capri instead and bring it down. But I don't trust that motor to last, to be honest. I probably would have had to top up the oil for it to actually keep going. Because it, the one thing is, and I don't blame Keith for this, it, it leaks oil profusely out of the uh, timing chain cover. That sucks. Um, hope you're having a fantastic day at work, though. And I am definitely well. My back hurts. I'm tired. But I'm well. I love driving down here. Like 1963, were 
a dual master cylinder. Um, and it's a safety thing. So if your vehicle isn't a dual master cylinder, that, that's the way to go. Because if you do have a blowout in a line, you still have brakes on either the front or rear of the car, depending on which line blows. Or depending on which line you even cut, you know? Because that's one of those things. It's interesting reading that comment there, George. Only reason why I say that, 69 and 70 Camaros look entirely different from each other. So, um, it's not just subtle changes. They change, it's a different generation entirely. 1970 is the start of the second generation Camaro. 69 is still first generation. They changed a lot with those cars. They actually got quite a bit bigger too. But regardless, that's still cool. Like, I was seeing, uh, actually, like, just driving around Lethbridge, and you always forget of, like, how much the car community is in Lethbridge, because everybody had their toys out today, and there was quite a few. You know, like, I saw, actually, really cool. Ah, that sounds, sounds good. I actually saw a 69 Camaro. It was black. It was a bit of ratty. I uh, just parked at, uh, in front of a liquor store in uh, Lethbridge. That was really cool, to be honest. You know, and I, I like to see the rat run look, because a lot of the time, people don't do that, right? With those cars, they, they restore them outright. They don't leave the patina on them. And that thing was just cool looking, with the patina on it. You know, it just catches my eye, because, like, yeah... Perfection, it like you know, looks really good and is cool, but there is something about seeing a patina car that is just a little more interesting to me. Absolutely, I love the rat rods, you know, and even if it's not like a full on rat rod, if it just happens to be like a patina mobile, that's cool too, right? Because, and I love the classic rat rods too, you know, like the the 30s, um, like 30s Model A's that are chopped up and stuff like that, Model B's, whatever else, you know, any of the Dodges, the Chevrolet's, you know, all that stuff. It's cool to see it.
it's like, you know, I'd be much better off if I had 41 extra subscribers right now. But it's not that. Because one thing is, subscribers technically don't get you anything other than it's just like, uh, subscribers are a flex on people more than anything. You know, the more subscribers you have, it's just like, oh, that's cool. But not necessarily they're watching, every single one of them is watching every single one of your videos. I wish. Because I'd actually, you know, be in a much better position on YouTube, but that does, it doesn't happen that way. You know, where I think my viewership is like 20% subscribe and 80% non-subscribe, so it's, it's quite low. But, um, yeah, to be honest, I might just say screw it and just end the live. I kind of want to listen to tunes as well, which I can't do well on live. So, um, anyways, I enjoy everybody who came out. Thank you so much for coming out, for chatting. It was a fun little live. Not very long, but still fun. Um, anyways, I love you all. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.